We're going to combine together the idea of limits and continuity as we look at finding what's called the instantaneous rate of change. The question we're going to ask is, how do we find the instantaneous rate of change? And before we get into the idea of what exactly is the instantaneous rate of change and how we find it, first we need to get comfortable with this idea of average rate of change. And the average rate of change is the idea that you've gone on some two-hour road trip. Maybe you averaged 40 miles per hour on that entire trip. That doesn't mean you went 40 miles per hour the whole time, but that does mean on average over the total distance, you hit an average of approximately that many miles per hour. How we set this up is first with a formula for the average rate of change. Let's say, to help us out here, let's say this graph represents our function. And we've got some point x over here, which means if I go up, we'll hit a y coordinate of f of x. And we're going to move over a distance of h. And if I've moved over a distance of h, that point is now x plus h, which means if I go up to the function and go over to the y, we get f of x plus h as our y coordinate. When we say the average rate of change, it's the amount we change from the first point to the second point as a straight line. It's really the slope of that line. So the average rate of change is the slope between the points. Well, we know how to calculate slope. We take the second y, which was f of x plus h, minus the first y, which was f of x, all over the second x, x plus h, minus the first x, which is x. Well, you can see in the denominator, we've really got x minus x if we combine like terms. And so if we want the average rate of change, actually, let's change colors here. The average rate of change is given by f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, because those x's subtract out to 0. This is going to be one of the most important formulas for us as we continue moving forward, this idea of average rate of change. So doing some examples, if I want to find the average rate of change of the function f of x equals 4x plus 2 on the range from 1 to 3. What we see here is x is the first point of 1, and h is how far over we move to get to the next point. h equals 2. But we actually don't really care about that because our h, x plus h value is really the amount we've moved over total of 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. So really what we're saying, in a sense, is if these are our two x values, what is the slope between the points? Well, we've got our x values. We need some y values. So let's find f of 1, 
which is 4 times 1 plus 2, which is 4 plus 2 of 6, and f of the other point of 3, which is 4 times 3 plus 2, or 12 plus 2, which is 14. And so our average rate of change is just the slope between those points. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 14 minus 6 over 3 minus 1, which gives us 8 over 2, which reduces down to 4. So on average, between 1 and 3, this function is changing at 4 units per moment of time. Let's try another example that's a little more involved. Let's try f of x equals x squared minus 3x on the range from 2 to 4. Well, that means the 2 is the x, and the 4 is the x plus h. In other words, we're just finding the slope between 2 and 4. So we're going to find f of 2 and f of 4 and calculate our slope. Well, f of 2 is 2 squared minus 3 times 2, which is 4 minus 6, negative 2. And f of 4 is 4 squared minus 3 times 4, which is 16 minus 12, which is 4. Our slope between those two points, y2 minus y1, 4 minus negative 2, over x2 minus x1, 4 minus 2, equals 6 halves, or 3. So the average rate of change between x values of 2 and 4 is 3 units on average. Now, quite often, we're not just finding the average rate of change between two points, but we actually want to find a formula for the average rate of change. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say f of x equals x squared plus 2x. By definition, the average rate of change is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So let's see what this gives us when we plug these values in. First, we take the x plus h and replace the x's. So our function becomes x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h. Then we're going to subtract the original function as it stands. And we have to put the original function in parentheses here to make sure we subtract the whole thing, x squared plus 2x all over h. And let's look what happens when we try to simplify this expression. Squaring the x plus h should give us x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distributing the 2 gives us plus 2x plus 2h. Distributing the negative gives us negative x squared minus 2x all over h. Notice then we have x squared minus x squared, which is 0. We have a 2x minus 2x, which is 0. So after combining like terms, we're left with 2xh plus h squared plus 2h all over h. Well, now what I notice is that numerator, every term has an h on it. So we can factor out that h, giving us 2x plus h plus 2 all over h. And those h's then can divide out, leaving behind a formula for our average rate of change of 2x plus h plus 2. Let's do one more example where we have to do some algebra to calculate the formula for the average rate of change. 
Let's find the average rate of change formula for 1 over 2x. Again, we're going to start much the same way in that the definition of the average rate of change is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. First, we'll take that x plus h and replace the x. So we have 1 over 2 times x plus h. Then we subtract the entire original function, 1 over 2x, all over h. We don't like having fractions inside of fractions. And if you remember from our study of pre-calculus, we can multiply by the least common denominator, which is a 2, an x, and an x plus h on top and bottom. And I can distribute the numerator through so that when I reduce the 2's and the x plus h, we have x minus, reduce out the 2's, reduce out the x's, and x plus h all over 2xh times x plus h. Well, that got rid of the complex fractions or the compound fractions. Let's distribute the negative through, which gives us x minus x minus h all over 2xh times x plus h. Notice x minus x is 0 change colors. x minus x is 0, leaving behind negative h over 2xh times x plus h, which is nice because those h's divide out. What you'll notice about these formula problems is you're usually done when the h's divide out. That almost always happens, which leaves behind a negative 1 over 2x times x plus h. And we now have a formula for the average rate of change. But our question at the beginning didn't really look at average rate of change. It wanted to know how to find the instantaneous rate of change. So let's look at that. First, let's see if we can find a formula for the instantaneous rate of change. What we did before is we had this graph. And we said we looked at a point x, which had an f of x point. We went over a distance h, which had this point of f of x plus h. And that gave us the average rate of change between the two points, from x to x plus h. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this h, and we're going to say, what if h was smaller? What if h only went maybe to here? Then our f of x plus h point would be moved up, and the line would become steeper. In fact, if the h point continued to move back all the way till h equals 0, that there was nothing left, what we would end up with is what we call a tangent line that basically comes up against the graph and kisses the point x that we're working with, but only touches that point. It's a tangent line because it touches the graph at the point and no other point. What we've basically done is taken our average rate of change formula, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and we've taken the limit as that h goes to 0. We shrink that space between x and x plus h down to 0, 
And that tells us instantaneously, at that moment in time, how the function is changing. This is like going on a two-hour road trip where you averaged 40 miles per hour. But at one moment in that trip, you might have been going 55 miles per hour. That 55 miles per hour at that moment is the instantaneous rate of change. It's not the average over time. It's just talking about that one moment you're going 55 miles per hour. That one moment is what we are often interested in in calculus. What is happening instantaneous? How fast are things changing at that moment? So this formula is probably the most important formula of calculus. And we're going to take a look at some examples of how we can use this formula. Let's say we have a function f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. And we want the instantaneous rate of change when x is equal to 6. Well, the definition says we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So to use this definition, similar to above, we just now have a limit as h goes to 0. We're going to take the x plus h and replace all the x's with it. So we have x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 1. Then we subtract the function exactly like it originally was. We'll stick it in parentheses to preserve the operation, x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over h. The problem with this limit as it stands, though, is it will always be discontinuous at 0 because the point does not exist. We cannot plug 0 into the denominator of this fraction. So what we need to do is what's called removing the discontinuity. We need to find a way to divide out that h to make it a continuous function so we can arrive at a solution. Well, that's just what we were practicing up above when we talked about average rate of change. Let's multiply this out and see how it simplifies. x plus h squared becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distributing the negative 3 through, we get negative 3x minus 3h. We also have a plus 1. Distributing the negative sign through gives us negative x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over h. And as we look to combine like terms, we see an x squared and a negative x squared. That's 0. We see a negative 3x and a positive 3x. That's 0. We see a positive 1 and a negative 1. That's 0. So all that's left is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared minus 3x. I'm sorry, minus 3h all over h. Just like before, we can remove that discontinuity by factoring in h out of each term. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 2x plus h minus 3 all over h. Reduce out that h to leave us with the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h minus 3. And now that we've removed that discontinuity, that problem point, it's no longer undefined when we plug 0 into h. That leaves us with just 2x minus 3. And this is the formula for the instantaneous rate of change. But we wanted to know what the instantaneous rate of change was when x equals 6. So we just have to plug into our formula. 2 times 6 minus 3 is 12 minus 3 which is 9. 
the instantaneous rate of change of the function x squared minus 3x plus 1 at 6, the graph is growing at a rate of 9 units per unit of x. Let's try one more, maybe a fraction one, to make sure we're comfortable using this formula before we let you go to try some on your own. We're going to say f of x equals 3x plus 2 over x plus 5. And we want the instantaneous rate of change at the point x equals 1. OK? We always start with our definition. I would recommend that you write this definition every problem you solve as you work on memorizing it so it becomes second nature. This is one of the most important formulas of calculus. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So let's replace the x's with this x plus h. That gives us the limit as h goes to 0 of 3 times x plus h plus 2 over x plus h plus 5 minus the entire original function, 3x plus 2 over x plus 5, all over h. Well, we don't like having fractions and fractions. So let's clear those fractions and fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator of x plus h plus 5 times x plus 5 in both the numerator and denominator. As we do that, I'll distribute through the numerator, x plus h plus 5 times x plus 5. So we can reduce. And that gives us the limit as h goes to 0. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 through as well. So we have 3x plus 3h plus 2 times the x plus 5. Minus, dividing out the x plus 5s, we have 3x plus 2 times x plus h plus 5 all over our denominator of h times x plus h plus 5 times x plus 5. We've got one more step of making it ugly before it's going to simplify really nice and pretty. So now we're ready to multiply this all out before it simplifies really nicely for us. The limit as h goes to 0. Multiplying out, we've got uh, 3x times x is 3x squared plus 15x. Distributing the 3h through plus 3xh plus 15h, distributing the 2 through, plus 2x, plus 10. With the minus sign, so I don't make a sign here, I'm going to distribute the negative through the first parentheses, and then distribute negative 3x squared, negative 3xh, negative 15x, Distributing the 2 through, negative 2x, negative 2h, and negative 10, all over our common denominator of h, x plus h plus 5, times x plus 5. Then combining like terms becomes really nice, because you see 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. 15x minus 15x is 0. 3xh minus 3xh is 0. 2x minus 2x is 0. 10 minus 10 is 0. All that we're left with is 15h minus 2h is 13h over h times x plus h plus 5 times x plus 5. And now we've been able to remove the discontinuity of h that we don't want in the denominator. 
So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 13 over x plus h plus 5 times x plus 5, which if we plug 0 in for the h, we get 13 over x plus 5 times x plus 5 is x plus 5 squared. And we now have a function for our instantaneous rate of change. The question was specifically asking at x equals 1. So we'll plug 1 into that formula. 13 over 1 plus 5 squared gives us 13 over 6 squared is 36. And so at the point x equals 1, this function is changing. y is changing at 13 36 for every x. We have the instantaneous rate of change. So we've gotten a chance to talk about the all-important formula of calculus where we find the instantaneous rate of change. This formula has many applications in business and economics, and we'll take a look at those when we get to class. So for now, take a look at the homework assignment, practice several of these, and we will discuss them more when we see you in class.